Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Fantasy Baseball Experience Podcast. Uh, is this matchup seven? I believe this is I the believe so. seven podcast. Uh, yes, sir. Here you got your three big dick energy scores for the week. Obviously, me coming far and away, first place, 297 points this week. Will Sayers joining us on the pod. Close second. I'm not going to, I'm going to not sell you short. 296 uh, ESPN donked a point from you right after games ended up. I don't know what it's from. You're one point behind me. And then Austin, Pete, my meat. What a name. 289 coming in. Third scorer for the week. Uh, Will, first of all, I'll start with you. you were you happy this week? Did you think you're going to overtake me? Uh, how are you feeling about the team? Dude, all right. Yeah, I mean, of course I'm happy, you know, when to win. Like, that's what I tell myself when, uh, whenever like, I'm, like, nowhere close to getting on the podcast, but, like, you still win. I'm just like, all right, whatever. But, uh, yeah, dude, I was, like, checking all day, just, like, not even caring about my matchup, just being like, dude, can I beat Ethan out? So, I think I think Josh Naylor struck out in the doubleheader. I think that's what happened. Well, you so, didn't beat me out, but Austin yeah. is meat out. And uh, 289 from you, Austin, the name, I love it. You look like you're frozoned over there. And there you go, you're moving. So uh, you stoked to be on the podcast. Did you think it was going to happen uh, heading into Sunday? And hey, happy where you ended up. You know, uh, interesting matchup today, Pablo Lopez and Shohei dueling it out on the mound today. So, you know, maybe if they're playing other teams, you know, I could have jumped in there, had a little action. Both had a good, you know, decent performance. Definitely show hey. But yeah, you know, uh the bats were alive this week. That's what I, I say. was noticing that. I was going through your summary and your entire top seventy five percent was just all your sticks. Um but <clears throat> we'll hop right into it. Will, I want to talk with you. You know, we hit on Austin's consistent hitting, but I want to talk about your consistent pitching. Is it something you think's gonna keep up? Because I'm looking at your pitching and like Merrill Kelly coming out. You're just, it's all these guys that none of them were expected to be aces preseason, but week in, week out, they are performing. So I think, I think right off the bat, Merrill Kelly is probably going to have some regression. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, he, he went up against the ace uh, this week, which helped a lot. Justin Steele, though, I don't know. I kind of think he's like a dog. Like, I think he's legit. I got to watch the pitch in Chicago, and I was impressed with, like, the kind of ball he was playing. There weren't any – he's not one of those contact pitchers. There's, like, a bunch of balls hits a warning track or anything. I felt like everything stayed mm-hmm. on the ground, and he seemed really consistent. Yeah, so, I mean, he's, like, my favorite waiver wire pickup, I guess, of all time since it's my second year. But uh, Gosman, I think, is legit. I think Gosman's probably the best pitcher on my team. I keep looking over here to my screen. Aaron Nola – I think he's going to be fine, but I don't think he's the ace that, like, I drafted. But uh, I think he'll have days where he drops 27 like today. And uh, I'm fine with that, you know, as long as he's not just constantly getting me zero points. Any double digits, I'm fine with. Yeah, I mean, Gossman and Nola are both the big names on your team, and they're not performing mm-hmm. quite where they should be. Gossman seems to be coming back, but then he has a giant blow-up game that seems to keep happening. I believe it's yeah. supposed to be the next game, right? Let's see. He has three good, a bad, three good, a bad, and he's yeah. had three good. So It'll Friday just be a at, sneaky at Minnesota. It, it would fit the trend. Yeah, you might want to watch out for that one. Um, And a big thing I want to hit on for you, obviously, the league just shits on your past year's performances in all fantasy leagues, gives you no respect. You got one of the top teams this year. You're getting a lot of praise in the chat. Is it going hey, to it did. Uh I mean – how do you the feel meat riding, the meat riding was kind of insane. They were doing flips, you know. But uh, <laughs> no, nah, I'm kidding. I mean, I, it's nice. Like yeah, I did think to myself, I was like, "Damn, this is this is new." But uh, no, nah, it's 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 cool. I I definitely last year I had no idea like about fantasy baseball. Like I think you might have texted me like two weeks before this like the season, and I was like, "Ah, right, yeah, I'll do it just to like get in." This year, like I I did do some research but i i got lucky on like a lot of picks like with glaber torres like i kind of i thought i was punting second base but he's done really well and yeah sean murphy was also like a very good pick so i don't know it's nice i'm excited about the future yeah yep well 
I hope it keeps up for you. I enjoy, you know, because your whole thing is you're always the toilet bowl champ, but I think you got a real shot this year at signing your name on a fucking trophy. So that would be awesome. That would yeah, be. I imagine if Juan Soso starts doing anything. I mean, he, hey, at least he's Juan Soso. He, 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 had a, he had a little week there where I was like, okay. But, you know, he's kind of back to being That's mid. why he's Juan Soso now. Yeah. He used to be Juan Succo. Now he's Juan Soso. We're waiting on him to come back to his roots. So, Will, uh, appreciate you making it tonight and getting to talk it up. I hope the things just keep coming for you. I hope to keep seeing you on the pod. I like the energy you bring. It's some new blood in the fantasy baseball world. Austin, you're a classic here. You're always just that, like, third or fourth guy in the league. You never make the big push. But one thing I've always found consistent in no matter what fantasy sport the names that you bring are absolute heat. So I look earlier this week, you got some Japanese letter. I'm trying to copy paste, figure out what it means. And you're like some secret Japanese hater or whatever I came up with. And today I tune in to Pete, my meat. Uh, did you just pop in your brain? Were you jerking off and thinking about Pete Alonzo? How'd it come to be? I mean, sometimes you arrive at the train station and you don't know how you got there. And you know, you, you, you take the, you take the ride for the day. And, you know, the, the, the Japanese embassy gave me a call this week, told me to change my name. So I had to find something. Uh, I hope no one actually translated what, <laughs> what was actually my name. <laughs> because that'll get your, uh, that'll get the FBI right straight on the watch list for them. Yeah, we'll keep but, that on YouTube. So, you know. Uh, I like to keep it fresh and, you know, we'll see, we'll see where Pete, my meat can, can go. Cause you know, Pete's got the meat. I mean, he's got the meat. And I even misspoke saying it out loud to Kinsley and I called it beat my Pete. And I mean, you can do <laughs> that too. I mean, it's interchangeable. Yeah. It's <laughs> there's, there's many, many variations. It's simple. It's, it's a lot like Pete Alonzo himself. It's a lot like him. So Besides the names, the serious business, what your team actually brings, you go for the Christopher Morrell pickup. You beat everyone to him. Let's not beat around the bush. This guy's balling. He had 39 this week. Um, he's batting 381 and slugging 952 since he's been called up. Uh, I know Horner's coming back, but the Cubs are going to find a place for him to play. Dude's out of his mind. Were you yeah. waiting for him to get called up for an injury or anything? I know he was around last year. Or you just beat everyone yeah. in the free agent pickup. You know, I vaguely remember how he was last year. Um, but, you know, I think, uh, I don't know, maybe some of these pe people in our league didn't quite trust it because I didn't, I didn't pick him up too swiftly. I mean, that was two games, maybe even three games into him coming back, and he was still up there. And I was like, I'll, I'll pick him up. You know, second base outfield, that's two uh, interesting positions to have. So, um, you know, I, what am I counting here? Is it four, six, eight home runs in 12 games? I mean, it, it's it, it's absurd. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know what to say. When you watch him play, obviously, he is swinging for the absolute moon on every pitch. So, you know, the, the Ks are up there, but, uh, I mean – he literally destroys them. It's, he it's is, absurd to watch. He is averaging 6.2 a game. Get yeah. out of here. That's two Damn. great players that you're getting out of your outfield position right now from a waiver guy. So, yeah, just threw him in. Um, it makes me sick talking about him. So, I just want to move on. But I knew I want to, while we had this He's good discussion today, I just wanted to reach out to you. I know you're a good golf patron. What do you think about Brooks Kepka winning the PGA Championship today? Um, I, it, I don't know how you feel about Brooks Kepka or Will, but um, you know, it, it kind of like in Star Wars terms, like it feels like the Empire's back. <laughs> like, like it feels like all the Jedi have died, and now the Empire are back and have taken over. I, I mean, I don't, I don't dislike. Um, Brooks too much, but I was telling it's you, just pretty meh. What it feels like for me is like I have always liked Brooks. I like his ego and stuff. But once he left the tour, I'm I'm an LIV supporter. Go do your thing, make your money, and I like competition. 
but the majors are like the national championship game and I'm going to root for the uh, SEC team over the big 10 team in the national championship. So it, it kind of irks me that Kepka did win it. And it's kind of felt like the SEC lost the PGA tour lost, but I do like him. Yeah. So I'm kind of mixed on it, but I just want to cover that yeah. a bit in sports, see the majors and how they're playing out. But will me and you have something in common this season that I need to cover tonight. And we trade raped Benton Stroud. So I, I just wanted to go over this week's for Benton on the pod, let Austin put his input in as well. So I'll start with mine. Obviously, the big Arenado Sunny Gray trade. This week, Arenado had 34, Sunny Gray had four. When this goes through the league, everyone's kind of like, Ah, Ethan, you did well, but I I knew from the start, this dude sold so early on Arenado. He's a Hall of Fame player. He's going to be back. And then your trade with him, Merrill Kelly, Patrick Wisdom. This week, you get 43 from Merrill Kelly, and he gets negative eight from Patrick Wisdom. So combined, Benton this week got negative four from his new players, and he lost 77 points. <laughs> we'll start with you, Austin, since you obviously didn't trade with him. How do you feel from the outside looking in? Um, you know, I I think I think let me just say this to the league. We're gonna have to button down the hatches or however you say that phrase, and we're gonna have to literally start, you know, really taking a look at these trades because that that's kind of ridiculous, the Arenado trade. I mean, obviously. I, I don't know how to feel about Sonny Gray. I mean, I guess he had his first bad start this week. Is that what was happening? He had a four-pointer. It's not like he imploded, but. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, I don't like any St. Louis Cardinals players. So, obviously, I don't rate Arenado as highly as I should have. But, you know, we can't let people like Ethan start stacking up players like this. I mean, it's 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 getting ridiculous. And, and definitely not Brady. We can't keep trading with Brady and letting him just – acquire all the pitchers all right so let's just everybody just kind of focus in calling names right now yeah i, I see who austin's feared up there i mean <laughs> Brady, <laughs> I don't our way through. I, Brady right austin, austin's got a trade pending for me right now i was <laughs> about to throw that out that's already been re- that's already been rejected okay okay uh well i assume you're stoked is you have anything else you want to say on that trade between okay uh, so like talking about like just his trade with you when we did the rapid trade reaction that is like verbatim what i said and i was like i think benton got fleeced here and i think he hit the panic button way too hard too early and that is what happened it is what it is i don't care uh with my trade i picked up patrick wisdom and then like i had him on my team for like three weeks and like i watched him because he like started out super hot Then he just, like, started slumping, and then I was like, Benton sent me that trade, and I was like, to myself, I was kind of like, damn, he's asking a lot for Patrick Wisdom, even though, like, it's Merrill Kelly, but I was like, yeah, I'll I'll accept that, and so I feel very good about that. I checked checked today just to, like, see how he was doing, and I saw the negative eight, and I was like, I just laughed to myself a little bit because I was like, that is wild. (laughs) That is some good juice for the podcast. Yeah, I have to bring it up. And honorable mention, uh, I'm not going to throw anybody under the rug here. I don't want any drama. This was brought to my attention from one of our uh, listeners within the league. They wanted this to be covered tonight and how Benton was fleeced on these trades. So you know who you are. Thank you for giving me these statistics to look at because it's definitely something that everyone needs to be aware of. Um, Last but not least, it's the power rankings. It's what we're here for. And I just want to say... I'm the top scorer this week. I've been in and out of the top three. We know who the best fucking team is. I stole Aaron Otto from Stroud, and there is no looking back. I absolutely have the best player at pretty much every position except for, like, first base and two outfield spots. Besides that, I'm stacked on my hitting. My pitching's a bunch of vets that are going to stay consistent. I'm the top team in the league. Not worried about it. Number two team in the league, Will, I give it to you. I'm just – listen – I'm not going to, we're not making any secrets. The three guys here, we're the top three in the league. Will, you're, you keep outdoing everyone's standards. I know you're four and three uh, after this week, but it'll, it'll keep going for you. You're doing great. And Austin, 
this is your third time on the pod. I'm almost tired of seeing you on here. Your names are great. I understand. You're great. Everyone just wants to hear you. Austin, you're the third best team in the league. And what I'm going to do so we can all be involved on the podcast, start a new bottom to up power rankings for the rest of the league. I have the standings over here on my right. I'll share the screen so y'all can see them. But if not, you can look at them on your own. And I'll start since I'm top scorer, and I will list who I think the 12th place team is. And then I'll let Will go for the 11th. Austin pick the 10th, and then we'll work up to number four spot. So uh, I want to cover somebody who they're in and out every week, up and down. Brady's the worst team in the league. He played Kinsley this week for the battle for last, and he clearly failed. He had like 80 <laughs> points heading into today. I'm so sick of this old ass man team that he keeps acting like is going to turn around because it's not going to happen. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to say Brady is the worst team in the league and we will mark him in. Hold on. Let me share my screen just so we can all get a good look at the standings here. All right. Oh no. What did I click on? So I got Brady in at 12th. Uh, will, I will let you go. Who do you think the second to worst team in the league is? All right. This is like, this might be too low, but it is not much higher than this. And that's Benton. All right. I know that like Benton is like five and one, but he literally has less points than Kinsley. All right. Think about that. Like, the only person below him is Alex Christian with three points less. The fact that he is five and one is a miracle from God, and that blows my mind. Bro, he does have fifteen sixty three. That's crazy, and like that's just like wild to me. So, you know that that's my number eleven. I'm. I think that's kind of fair. I'm gonna be honest. That came out of nowhere. <laughs> that really did. But I'm, yeah, I mean, yeah. so this has thrown the power rankings into a world. Um, wow. But so, I mean, I mean, you brought in the stats, and that's that is that is a really hard stat to get over, especially kind of crazy grades. Mm. So, uh, Austin, tenth place team, who you got? Well, I mean, I, I think it's fair to just put Kinsley there. I mean, she had a good week. So congrats to her getting a good week going. Um, I really just don't have much faith in, um, you know, what she can do for the rest of the season. I mean, she can snag some wins here and there. But, you know, I, I, nothing's really, you know, nothing's really drastic to change enough to, to make me think she's out of the bottom three. Yeah, I don't know how to explain her. It's just very meh. Well, here's the bottom three. Ah, I'm kind of torn <clears throat> here going to nine. I know Cody had a good week. I'm going to stick Hayden down there. I know he scored 230 this week, but he has the jinx from God. And I think that the way this season's going, his luck is not going to turn around. And he's just going to keep fluttering down there, and he's going to fall out of the playoffs into the season. I think that's a that's that's a fine choice. Yeah. Are you talking about Hayden or Logan? Hayden. So Schwarber. Okay, okay. That with him. Yeah. Okay, I got you. His luck's not there. Will who you got? There's Bring nothing him. exciting there. Uh, you know, I'm battling between Mitch and Alex here, but I think we got to just go with the clinic for right now, just because there's just so many injuries. It's it's actually like laughable and i feel bad for him so maybe it'll turn around but until he gets some health on his team i have him at i guess eight yeah like i'm talking about hayden's bad luck alex is actually has yeah. luck. his players are just gone so he's scrambling to make something happen with that uh austin that brings you to the seventh spot there's still some weak teams i see sitting down here we've had a fun little rankings mix up here yeah um you know, I, I think I think uh, I think you can put Mitchell's team here now. Um, I, I I mean, Bryce Harper is you know maybe the one guy I'm, I I have a little hope for, but 
look, Trey Turner, I, I don't know what to think of this. I mean, this is some absurd stats coming from Trey Turner. It, it, it It's quite absurd. I mean, I, I think, you know, there's some names there on his team, you know. He, he can he can turn it around. He can put up some points. But, you know, I, I just – I mean, the I dropped Michael Walker last week, and that guy put up fifty of his points this week. So, I mean, that big mistake on my part, but that fifty of his points came from just that one guy. Yeah, and looking at it, Mitchell has one thousand four hundred eighty-eight points, putting him only above Brady and below Benton. So, that's rough. Um, so does this get us to six spot? Yeah. Yeah. Six spot just above Mitchell. It's got to be Cody. I'm surprised he made it up here. Uh, I'm sick and tired of going into work every day and him being like, did you see what Mitch Keller did? I don't care what Mitch Keller did. He's not going to keep doing it. He's going to fall off. That's a joke of a player. The fact that he's playing as good as he is. But if he wants to come on the podcast sometime, I'd love to have him on talk to him. I'm sure he's a great guy. Uh, Will, who you got sitting above Cody? You know, I guess I got Logan. Um, what is he like? Two and five. He's really snuck up here. He he kind of did, but uh, I mean, he made a good point last week where he, he just had some bad luck. I mean, he is like he he goes against the highest score this week. When I was on the podcast the first time, he went against me. So just some bad luck. I think he I think his team is yeah. good though, and uh, he's, he's on he's on the opposite end of Benton right now of scheduling yeah getting tough matches so, is like to be fair he's not the top freaking scorer and he's gotten this bad luck he's fifth in scoring from what i can see and so we got him at five i mean obviously he keeps getting the top guy so he's not getting those wins but it's not like he's just murdering everyone and getting really unlucky mm-hmm. so uh that brings us i guess we're putting kevin at the four spot austin do you agree with that yeah, um, you know, obviously I put an absolute beat down on Kevin this week. Um, it, it was always going to be that way. Um, you know, it's hard to look, look at Kevin's team and, you know, see how he's put up these points. Uh, I'm even, I'm looking at it right now. It's still baffling. But, you know, uh, he's earned a little respect managerial-wise. I think at the beginning of the season on the first podcast, you know, I, I trashed it too hard, you know. He's 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 doing all right, and Acuna really helps. Yeah, Acuna doesn't help anyone right now. No, I agree. It's good to yeah. see him trying. He's making transactions. He's making waiver moves. He's sending trades. So he's he's definitely trying a lot harder, and he's like Will, you know. We trash him way too hard, and I think this off season it made their blood boil a little bit. <laughs> They're coming with some heat, man. They're coming with some heat. So we got to watch our yeah. Hey, toilet bowl represent, all right? Hey, we're coming for it. That's what's going on. So that's got Kevin at four. Will and Kevin have been training. So I got Austin at three, Will at two, and obviously the commissioner, the host of the podcast, is your top team in the league. Don't get it twisted. You guys have anything else y'all want to cover? That's pretty much all I got for the pod. That's all I got. I, I will say, though, uh, I was wrong. I guess Mitchell is also below Benton, but other than that, yeah, just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. Austin, you? Uh, that'll be conferred probably later on. Um, I have no idea who I play next week, but um, let's keep this steamroll uh, train going. The next and we'll week, get some more so dubs. I'll keep Benton down in the bottom for y'all next week. <laughs> Doing well, God's work. That's all I got for the matchup and, seven pod. And go Mets, baby. Go Mets. Yeah, another go Mets. Mets out of Austin. Pete and his meat over there. The two one victory they had on Sunday night baseball. Real boomer. Um I hope see you guys. I, I like this crew. I mean, if we keep scoring, let's just keep this podcast going. We don't have to let any of these other noobs in. Uh, that's all I got. I'm excited to see the league's reaction to this, and uh, I hope you guys have a great week. Good luck. Same to you. Y'all joining me on this Sunday night. Y'all have a good week. Yes, sir.